When light reflects off a mirror, it does so in such a way that the angle of reflection is always equal to the angle of incidence. When an object is placed in front of the mirror, this principle means that an image of that object will be formed in line with the reflected ray. Let's consider a mirror and an object that is placed just in front of the mirror. This dash side represents the back of the mirror and I'm going to draw an object. Now, traditionally, physicists always use arrows to represent objects because an arrow has a clear top and a bottom. Now, we've learned that when light from the top of this object hits the mirror, that light is going to be reflected in such a way that the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection are both the same. I'm going to draw a normal line relative to the mirror using one of these guides. Um, the normal line is the line at 90 degrees. The word normal in mathematics just means at right angles to at 90 degrees. And we know that when this reflects, the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection should be the same. Now, if I take my protractor and try and measure the angle of incidence, I'm getting it at being about 29 degrees. So what I want to do is I want to make a reflected ray or draw a reflected ray at that same point that comes off the mirror at 29 degrees, which means it's going to be reflected in this direction here. Now, if an observer looks at, that's supposed to represent an eye, this ray of light, from their point of view, the ray of light appears to be coming from somewhere over here. The mirror reflects it in such a way that the light looks as though it's coming from that direction. Now, I can show that by extending this line backwards. This dotted line represents what I'm going to call a virtual ray. And that virtual ray to the observer will appear as though it comes from a virtual object located somewhere over here. Now let's consider another ray of light coming from the top of the object but hitting the mirror at a different point. Once again we're going to find that this ray of light, let me draw the normal at that point, will be reflected in such a way that the angle of incidence here will be equal to the angle of reflection. In this particular case I'm finding that the angle of incidence is about, that looks like 43 degrees, no, yeah, 43 degrees, I'll go with that. So when I draw my reflected ray at 43 degrees, it's going to come off the mirror in this direction. And if I extend that ray backwards, this second virtual ray is going to look as though it comes from that point over there. And we'll notice that the two virtual rays appear to cross. Now, from the point of view of the observer over here, these rays look as though they're coming from the reflection of the object in the mirror. And so that reflection must be located at the point where the two rays cross. So in other words, our image is going to be at this point here. And this is what we call a virtual image formed by virtual rays. A virtual image, the official definition is that it's an image that is formed by the divergence, meaning the spreading out of rays from a point. But quite commonly, people use a simpler definition. There is a definition that it's an image that is formed when the light doesn't actually go through the image. If you look at this image, the light is all located on the left of the mirror, but the image in this case, is located on the right. Now, if we look at the image very carefully, we'll notice, first of all, that the image is in line with the object. They're both located at the same height in this direction. If we draw a line crossing the mirror at 90 degrees, the top of the image is in line. The other thing we'll notice is that the distance from the object to the mirror, which is about 70 millimetres, is the same as the distance from the image to the mirror, also 70 millimetres. Another thing that I can't show using this diagram, but I could if I drew rays coming from the bottom of the object, is that the two images are the same size, and that also the image is the correct way around. It's not inverted, it's the same way around as the object.
There we go, that's our ray diagram. If you're drawing a ray diagram, um, for example, in an exam, there is actually a very quick way to draw a diagram very, very accurately, which uses a bit of a trick based on what we know about images. If I draw an image on this side of the mirror, we know that the other image is going to be located the same distance behind the mirror. So it's going to be located somewhere, if I draw a very faint line, along that line, and we can see that this object is 82 millimetres um, in front of the mirror. So we know that the image is going to actually be located here. Now I can use the fact that I know the image is going to be there to actually cheat and draw my ray diagram very, very quickly. All I'm going to do is draw a ray coming down to the mirror, and then I'm going to line my ruler up with that point, the point where the image is. And then I can draw my virtual ray, and I know that my real ray, my reflected ray, is then going to go in that direction like that. And when I do that, the two angles actually, I and R, will be the same. And I can now draw a second ray coming down to the mirror. Once again, I can line that ray up with where I know the image is going to be, draw my virtual ray, and then draw my real reflected ray. And that is a very, very quick way of replicating the diagram that I drew earlier.